those two people were involved in tonight's shooting, but they say at this time they do not know where they are, nor do they have any descriptions of those two people besides saying that they believe they were driving white sedans at the time of the incident. Investigators said their initial investigation shows that those two suspects as well as uh, a possible number of other individuals were in those two white sedans. They drove into the parking lot next to the stadium stadium here at East Kentwood High School, where a graduation ceremony was just wrapping up and those two individuals began firing at one another. The Kent County Sheriff Michelle LaJoy Young said that there are multiple weapons involved in this investigation. We do know, like you said, that two people were injured as a result of that gunfire firing back and forth between the two cars. However, those two victims, they are luckily expected to be okay. The sheriff says one of the victims is a 16 year old boy who was visiting from out of town. He is originally from Texas. The sheriff says that he suffered a gunshot wound to his wrist. The other victim had a little bit more serious injuries. Uh, that is a 40 year old woman from Grand Rapids. We are told she was shot in her stomach as well as in her wrist too. But luckily, they are expected to be OK. Nonetheless, a very scary situation for the people who were here today. Like I said, this all took place just after 7 p.m. This evening, we are told that a graduation ceremony for the Crossroads, which is East Kentwood's alternative high school, was wrapping up. There was also a middle school concert going on at the middle school, so lots of people were here. I spoke to two uh, teenagers. They were actually in the middle of the gunfire. They said that they were sitting in their car outside of the stadium waiting for their grandmother. When those two vehicles showed up and began firing at one another, they talked about having to duck down and protect themselves uh, for fear of being shot. So just some terrifying moments here tonight. Take a listen to what the sheriff had to say. This is a very traumatic thing to go through, and I would say be empathetic to um, other members in the community and understand that going through the, something like this is something that will be difficult for them to shed, um, talk through it, work with. If, if you feel the need for a mental health professional, there are mental health professionals to work with, and um, I think we need to keep in mind that when we have an event like this happen, our whole community suffers. Now, like I said, at this time, they do not have any suspect information such as their ages or what these people look like. They just simply say that they believe they were both in uh, white sedans at the time of this shooting. We are told that they have been reviewing video from the school district, anything that may have been caught on camera, but there really isn't any great images, so they are calling on the community to uh, bring forth any video or pictures. I should note that the sheriff says that the two victims who were sh shot, they weren't in the cars at the time of the incident. They just appear to be innocent bystanders. They were standing in the parking lot during the time of the incident with their uh, respective families and friends. Um, she says that they do not think that they were in any way involved in the shooting. Like I said, they just happen to be innocent bystanders at this time. They don't have a motive for this shooting. Once again, they are asking anyone with information to give them a call or report a tip anonymously through Crime Stoppers or Asylum Observer. Excuse me. So once again, if you do have that information, bring it forward. She says that they need to bring it uh, an end to this as quickly as possible to help those all involved heal from this event. I'm reporting in Kentwood, Marisa Oberly, Fox 17 News. All right, Marisa, thank you. And, and an unimaginable turn of events for people right. who may have been there. This happened after a graduation. Uh, Matt Witkos joins us now. And Matt, you spoke to a student about what something like this is like. And, and they even talked about a possible return to school tomorrow, Matt. 
Yeah, I spoke with a student and I just gone off with a mom who was attending this graduation just moments ago. She wants to remain anonymous because right now she fears for her and her family's life. She mentioned to me that she had a grad and family here. This was supposed to be a joyous moment for them at the Crossroads Alternative High School graduation. The school district mentioning that there were 60 families here and, and now forever this is going to be a moment where they remember a shooting that happened in this parking lot right by the East Kentwood High School football stadium. And that mom, she was when I was talking to her over the phone, she was feeling all kinds of emotion. She was feeling anger, upset, heartbroken about the situation. And she had, had told me that there were four men involved in this shooting. So a very scary situation for everyone, all the families here. The superintendent had released a statement to us that reads that when violence occurs within our community, it is both troubling and tragic. He added that they're committed to the health and safety of our community. He says they're going to provide support and counseling to any students needing someone to talk to. And like you mentioned, Josh, I did talk to an East Kentwood High School senior. She had mentioned that her sister was attend attending that middle school choir that was going on in the auditorium. She says she was afraid for her sister and she says she was feeling uh, heartbroken to know that her sister was going through this situation. She said that a lot of people were running in and screaming and she like started freaking out because she's only in sixth grade. I was just scared for my sister. Um, I'm really hoping we have school tomorrow. I don't want to miss school. I'm it's our last day for seniors. The superintendent during that statement didn't uh, address whether or not school is going to be going on tomorrow. Uh, the Kent, uh, Kent County Sheriff's Office is still out here. They're still investigating uh, what the, what happened here, the situation that unfolded with that shooting right here by the East Kentwood football stadium in that parking lot. It's still roped off. The sheriff mentioning that they still plan to be out here as long as this investigation continues. Reporting live here in East Kentwood, I'm Matt Whitcoast, Fox 17 News. Matt, thank you. To learn more about those two victims now, we want to go live to Julie Dunmire, who's standing by outside of the University of Michigan Health West Hospital on the southwest side of town with the latest on their conditions. Julie, what are you learning? Janice, I think the most important takeaway from today's events is this is a tragic, incredibly tragic situation. So many lives are going to be shaped by this, especially given that it was after a graduation ceremony but the most important thing is that these two victims in this shooting are okay, as in they survived. This could have been much worse any time there's gunfire involved. Of course, there's that risk of things, you know, just taking a dramatic turn and learning today, this afternoon, and throughout the evening that those two victims are expected to be okay. That 16-year-old who was shot in the wrist hand area, the 40-year-old woman from Grand Rapids shot in the abdomen and in the wrist as well. They spoke to a few of their loved ones who were outside of Metro here in Byron Center who uh, told me, you know, that they are going to be okay much earlier on in the evening. And I think that that is the most important thing. Kent County Sheriff's deputies were also here at the hospital for a little bit. It's unclear whether or not they are still here. But I do know that, you know, if there's one thing that people can take away from all of this, it is that at the end of the day, things could have been much worse, especially given the location of where this happened. I know anyone, anytime anyone hears something happening at a school, that you get that feeling in your stomach, it kind of sinks down. Uh, it's fortunate that things were not worse tonight. And of course, as we learn more, we'll continue to update you guys. But for now, I'm live in Byron Center. Julie Dunmeyer, Fox 17 News. And we've continued to talk about the lack of information that the mm -hmm. sheriff's office has about the suspects involved. We really only know that there were several, uh, possibly two shooters mm -hmm. involved, but uh, multiple suspects got into white sedans, uh, two white sedans, and took off at a high rate of speed uh, from the parking lot where this happened. We heard the Kent County Sheriff tonight asking for uh, the public's help to share videos with them if they have any information about what happened. And Lauren Edwards will join us live now from the newsroom with what you can do if you know or saw what happened there tonight. Lauren? Janice, Josh, you know it's a phone call or you know a text message or a post that nobody wants to make. It's quite terrifying in and of itself. But we spoke with the silent observer and they say there's nothing to fear. They can keep you and your information anonymous. Now earlier we spoke with Chris Cram Cameron with the silent observer and she says the goal of the organization is to solve, stop, 
and prevent crime. They understand there's fear, fear of retaliation when someone leaves a tip on one of their platforms, whether it be the web or over the phone. Now everyone though, they want everyone to know that it's all anonymous. They do not use caller ID, they do not track IP addresses. They just want the crime solving information. These violent criminals um, dictate you know, how we live and how we operate. You know, silence is violence, really. And by keeping quiet, who wins? Only the criminal, only the people that make life dangerous wins if we don't share what we know. Now, the school also has what's called a Fast 50 program where students can leave tips on what happened. And remember, rewards are offered. The site observer announcing earlier that they are increasing the reward money that leads to an arrest. As for us, we're going to continue to stay on this case and give you guys updates as we get them. Reporting live here in the newsroom, Lauren Edwards, Fox 17 News.